Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Rebel Reels. I am your host yet again, Jay Frazier. I'm the social media manager here at Commit Agency. And today I have with me the amazing, come and introduce yourself. Uh, my name is Marcus Kent. I'm the CEO at Board Developer based out of Tempe, Arizona. And I'm also lucky enough to mm -hmm. serve as the fractional integrator here at Commit. Let's go ahead and dive right into executive leadership assessment. What is that? Yeah, yeah. so um, about 12 years ago, the founder of our company, Jim Hayden, he went out and he was looking at all the assessment tools in the marketplace. And so our executive leadership assessment actually combines about 15 different leadership assessments. Everything from uh, DISC, Gallup, People Cues, Myers Briggs, uh, Lomaker, Color okay. Code. If you've heard of it, it's probably there's aspects of it sure. in our assessment. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things we use it for um, is culture building, team building, executive mm -hmm. leadership. It's kind of like a really good way to get a status check of where your personality, your strengths, maybe the areas you need to work on, mm -hmm. communication style, worldview, emotional intelligence, sure. where all that is right here, right now. Our assessment looks at a couple of different things. It looks at your um, your personality style, both yeah. at work and at home. Mm -hmm. So it does a big, uh, it, it takes a deep dive in how you respond to stress, okay. how you respond to conflict, how you respond when people get big and emotional or big and aggressive. Mm -hmm. It looks at worldview, which we call axiology. Okay. And then it also looks at emotional intelligence and communication style. Mm -hmm. I think especially in this day and age, the emotional intelligence piece is huge. Right. Um, our assessment, while it combines all those other tools, it speaks in the DISC language. Okay. We, we found that DISC is one of the most widely used and easiest to understand. Mm -hmm. And so our assessment tool gives you a comparison of your DISC style at home versus your DISC style at work or not under stress versus under stress. Got it. Um, first and foremost, it gives everyone a shared language. So all of a sudden when we step in to talk about how I can better coach this person over here, mm -hmm. it's not my background and what I understand about leadership and, right. and personalities. It's, hey, you've been through the assessment, you've had a debrief, and now when I bring up that like, hey, your sense of urgency, we need to work on that, mm -hmm. we have a third party objective score on what your sense of urgency is. Sure. So it puts us all on the same page from the start of the conversation. Nice, okay. Yeah. And I know a lot of people know what DISC means, but can you walk through what each letter stands for? Yeah, so D-I-S-C, the mm -hmm. D is dominant, the I is interpersonal, okay. the C is con conscientious, and the S is steadiness. So about 3% of the population has a really high D in their style. Okay. That's people that are decisive and they like to be in charge and in control. The I is about 11% of the population. People with a high I, um, really emotional, driven by their emotions, emotions <laughs> on their sleeves. Um, people with a high I can talk to anybody at any time. High yeah. I uses that interpersonal connection as a way to navigate the world and motivate people around them. Yeah. The high S is 69% of the population, overwhelmingly high S in their style. Wow. And the high S, steadiness, people with a high S are incredibly loyal. Mm -hmm. They really like clearly defined expectations and they want to know like, Today is going to be the same as tomorrow, the same as the next day. You got to give them a lot of time to make a decision. Right. High S though is also very much like kumbaya. Let's bring everybody in and have a conversation. Yeah. And then finally, the high C, those folks are very, very data and detail driven. Mm -hmm. It's nothing personal. You run into a high C and you tell them something, they're like, that sounds great. I, <laughs> I need to cite your sources and understand where you, <laughs> right. how you came up with it. Everyone has the potential to have all of these qualities, right? Mm -hmm. It's just some are higher than the other. So talk about that. Like, where is the, if you have a little bit, like what's the percentages like yeah. you can have? Kind of so so that. most commonly people have two letters in their style. Okay. So they'll have, they'll have, let's say a D and an I in their style. Um, a little less common is one letter in your style where there's just one part of your personality that is the most expressive mm -hmm. and everything else is kind of uh, repressed. Okay. And then finally, the least common is three letters in your style. Got it. People with three letters in their style tend to get along with just about everyone mm -hmm. because all they have to do is make one subtle shift mm -hmm. to get along with the group that isn't naturally in their style. But the big thing our assessment looks at is how do you change between that not stress and now stress? And some people have massive changes in their style where they abandon their natural style or who they, who they are at home when they come into work or when they're faced with stress. Other people, no change at all and you're just kind of like what you see is what you get. I see. So understanding when and where that change happens and what happens mm -hmm. 
can be a really big first step towards like self-realization and understanding how to how to make yourself better and improve on things. Right. So where does this tie into a team environment? Mm -hmm. So talk to me a little bit about how a team benefits from the DISC assessment, any success stories that you mm -hmm. have. So let's dive into that. Yeah, I think um, while I think it's really powerful to do these one-on-one, -on -one, mm -hmm. like, you know, I get to walk you through your assessment and mm -hmm. you have those light bulb moments or those ahas, or you get that deeper understanding of yourself. Mm -hmm. When we take an entire team and we put everybody's results together, we have the ability to overlay them and look at them on a graph and look at everyone's collective strengths and weaknesses on a team. And all of a sudden you look at a team and you're like, hey, while you guys are really good at problem solving and communicating, you guys, no one on your team is great at persuading. Mm -hmm. No one on your team is a doer. Yeah. Like if you get a team full of high eyes, they're gonna talk about all of the world's problems and solve none of them. Interesting. And if no one's taking notes, no action items will ever get captured. Yeah. So all of a sudden when you look at a team like that and you're like, hey, you guys, every time you step into a meeting, need to designate a note taker yeah. and you need to think about action items. Because otherwise, you guys will chat and it'll feel good, but then nothing will get accomplished. Got it. And so when you understand the individual strengths and weaknesses and then you overlay them as a team, you can come in from a recruiting standpoint, from a training standpoint, and you can say, hey, this is what this team really needs to balance out and be more successful. When you take the assessment, mm -hmm. you start to weave it into the fabric of your culture. Like I said, at the very basics, it's a shared language for, we have two people that are like having some interpersonal conflict. Okay. We have a shared language to go in and talk about why and strategize about how to use it. But where I do see this kind of fall apart is mm -hmm. where people will take the assessment, go through a team workshop, and then put it up on a shelf and never touch it again. Right. You almost have to have someone in your organization that owns that process mm -hmm. of reminding people and working through it, mm -hmm. or you've got a, a really bearded, handsome consultant that comes in <laughs> and helps you walk through it. Um, obviously not talking to yourself. Um, but then having, it's just having someone that owns it and is, and is constantly reminding people about right, it. Right. Um, I've seen things, like we've done this before, where we put colored blocks on everybody's desk Okay. So when you're interacting with someone, you're immediately reminded of what their style is oh, and then how to interact with them. That's a good idea. Um, here at uh, Commit, we're actually, our AI team is building a GBT that knows everybody's styles. And so as you're writing emails, you can say, I'm sending this email to Jade and it will adjust the email. So it shows up in your inbox with your, written in your style wow. or a language that's more closely associated with your communication preference. What? And so I think any, cool. <laughs> anytime you take active steps yeah. to really understand and then be actionable about the information you know, yes. I think that is really valuable. Mm -hmm. But anytime you have the opportunity to do some sort of exercise that focuses on self-realization, mm -hmm. and then you take the next step, you understand yourself and how you move through the world, right. but then when you understand the person sitting next to you mm -hmm. and the person sitting next to them, and you can make it part of your intentional everyday practice, to think, where am I today? How am I acting? How am I communicating? And then being aware of how it affects the people around you, sure. that's huge. Yeah. I think I think if more people were just aware of how they show up and how it affected people around them, the world would be a much softer place. I agree. Yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, if you have any feedback, comments, or questions, we're here to answer them. So please leave, leave a comment, okay? We wanna talk, we wanna have a conversation. So until next time, my name is Jade. Thank you again, Marcus. Absolutely, thanks for and having we'll me. See you, thank Take you. Care.